Hey everyone, I am here today to talk about uh, brand new wigs out of the box. I know that I talk about this a lot in some of my videos, but I wanted to do a just a standalone video that talks just specifically about um, getting a wig, taking it out of the box, and what can happen, and all the emotions that come along with that. This is especially geared toward my new wig sisters who maybe are brand new wearing wigs because this is especially difficult in the beginning of your journey. And trust me, I understand. And so does every wig sister that you have. Some of us are a lot further away from those first few months, but uh, it's still an experience I think that we all have to go through. And so I'm, I'm hoping to just help you with some tips, but also just help you level set your expectations and just encourage you and acknowledge that this is really one of the toughest parts of the journey. Uh, so let's just get right into it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two brand new wigs that I have not um, done anything with yet. I have an Avalon by Aesthetica and I have a Sweet Talk by Gabor. And, um, you know, I don't know if these are going to be the perfect examples, but We'll just go with what I've got. So before I do that, though, I want to tell you that I have on Gabor Opulence in the color uh, Mahogany, which is GL6-30. And I have not reviewed this one yet. I do plan to do a review for this one. And um, one of the great things about Opulence is this is out of the box. This is how she looked when I took her out of the box. I actually have worn her. I wore her all day to work two days ago and learned a few things I'm going to want to do with her. First of all, she kind of goes down on my face a little bit, so I'm going to need to steam her. But this is an example of a wig that I took out and basically could wear right away. That's not very common, but I will say for me, it seems to be more common in these straight styles. In styles with curls and waves, it can be uh, less common. They, they just tend to need a little bit more intervention uh, prior to wearing. So. Um, that's maybe tip number one is when you're first starting out with wigs, sometimes those curly wigs can have a little bit of a learning curve, whereas the straight styles can sometimes be a little bit easier to wear out of the box. That said, I find straight wigs to have a lot more flyaway problem than curly wigs. Little tiny hairs that just kind of get away from the bunch and then hang in your face and tickle your forehead or constantly bother you. And I feel like I got to do this a lot with straight styles. So, you know, every kind of uh, style has its own challenges. But let's just uh, let's just take a look at um, Avalon to start. So Avalon and again, I will be doing reviews on these, but Avalon, um, this is Avalon and Avalon came to me about three or four weeks ago now, and I just haven't had time to do anything with, with her. So what I like to do when I get a wig is I like to quickly film an out of the box, and then I'm free to mess with the, the wig when I have an opportunity. And so I think I did that with Avalon. I'd have to look back. So she has been on my head, and I think I messed with her, or didn't mess with her. I think I did the out of the box. But basically when I do that, I take it, I put it on, and I film it and then I usually put it back in the box until I have time to play. So this is Avalon out of the box. To be honest, she's not that bad, really. I mean, overall, I would say, um, you know, sometimes I'll get a wig out of the box that's really, I mean, there's so much box hair and so much crimping, you know, Avalon's you know, a little, got a little flyaway action going on. Um, you know, I think the curls, you know, I would want to try to, you know, comb them out a little bit. But at the end of the day, Avalon doesn't look as bad as some that I've gotten. But what ends up happening is because wigs, especially curly wigs, have been living in a box, they can be flat, they can be lifeless, the, the hair can be like all um, kind of not matted together, but you know, the especially curls, they can just be clumped together a little bit because they've been living in a box and they can feel really, uh, just feel really lifeless. And so that's not unusual at all. I think one of the hard things though, honestly, 
without a lot of experience, how do you know if this is savable? You know, how do you know if a little bit of water, a little bit of shaking, a little bit of TLC will get you what you want? Because once you start messing with a wig, it's yours and you can't return it. That's not something that I can help you with fully in a video. What I can do is tell you what I do. I can tell you what's normal, but it is going to take some trial and error. And, and um, unfortunately, sometimes that can come at an expense because you don't know your preferences yet and you don't know what works for you yet. So messing with a wig and then not being able to get it the way that you want it can be challenging. Now there's lots of things you can do. You can sell it out, you can sell that wig. There's lots of for sale sites on Facebook. There's YouTube, or I'm sorry, well, if you have a channel, you could try selling it on your channel. There's uh, eBay, there's Poshmark and Wig Sanity. I mean, there's lots of places you can go to sell wigs, but it is an effort and you'll never get as much as you paid for it. Very rarely will you get as much as you paid for it. But there are some things. So I would say tip number one is watch a lot of videos. But if, you know, some of you aren't on Facebook or Instagram, and I respect that, you know, I struggle with social media a lot. But the challenge is if you're not in a group that can help answer questions, I don't know how you can go and assess what's going on. At least if you're on a Facebook wig group or um, that's probably the better place to be. Instagram can work, but I think Facebook is better. You can at least go to them and say, help. <laughs> you could take a picture of the wig on you and say, I'm really struggling with this. Do you think if I soak it, it will get better? I mean, I think there's just, you know, maybe it is just the style isn't you and nothing you do will work. Talking with some experienced wig sisters can help. They can tell you, well, this, I know what I know about that wig is there's tons of permatees, so I don't think you're ever going to get rid of the poof that you don't like, you know, those kinds of things. Um, but what I would do in this case is I would, because she doesn't look that bad, I would, I'm, I'd probably spray her with water. Before I do anything, um, I would spray her down with just plain water in a spray bottle that you can get at the dollar store. And I would spray her all over. I would shake her upside down. And don't be afraid to shake the tar out of your wigs. You're not gonna hurt, hurt them for the most part. I would say, you know, if it's a super, super long wig, you might make it tangly, but I shake the tar out of my wigs once I get them wet. And then I, in a curly wavy wig, I hang them upside down by their tag. I don't turn it inside out. I just take the tag and I hang it upside down, just like that. And then I just scrunch up the curls. You know, I kind of go like this. I'm try what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to separate the fibers. I'm not trying to make it frizzy. I'm not taking a comb through it, which I never do with these wavy waves, not at first at least. And then I would scrunch it up and then I would hang it. If it's super wet, I hang it in my shower. If it's not, and then I would just hang it back there on my towel rack with some of my other wigs. That a lot of the time is enough to really get these fibers alive and awake and separated so they're not clumping together. And then once they're dry and you know, you can just put a little water to start, you can soak the heck out of it. Water is not going to hurt your, your wig. And so, you know, it's kind of trial and error how much you think you need to do. But then once it's dry and I put it back on, it may not be finished, but it's almost always better than it was. Now she's a little, now she's a little wild because I didn't spray her. Um, but then I can start to work with style. And maybe I feel I need to take a comb to her because I want to relax the waves. Maybe I need to take steam to her. You know, wigs, wigs are, how do I say this? They're, they're mass marketed. You know, they may be small batch mass marketed and there's features on wigs that are hand tied. These lace fronts are hand tied. These mono features are hand tied. That means a person 
tied the fibers into that. There's no way you're gonna get 100% consistency with those hand tied features. Um, but for the most part, they're not, they're not custom made, so they're not made for your head and your preferences. So you do have to be prepared to do some things to wigs to make them your own, whether it be just using product or heat. Steam is your wig's best tool when you really need to make some changes. Um, where do I have, I'm trying to see where I have, oh, hold on you guys, I think she's over here, I hope. I have a wig that I have a video on, here she is, um, my Christy by John Renault. This was a used piece from a wig sister and I had to do some work on her because she just was not working for me. She's been laying over there, I need to comb her out to make her look decent. Um, so Christy came to me with a ill-fitting cap. She'd also been cut. Some bangs had been cut into her and I don't like bangs. And I had a terrible cone head on this one because the cap just really doesn't fit me well in my crown. This is a fully hand-tied cap. And so I, I took steam to her and I steamed up the sides and I steamed up the front. I steamed these bangs over so that they didn't lay down. And I was able to make Christy my own using steam. That's, it's not hard, but it's hard for a newbie because you're, you're so afraid to mess things up. So if you check out my YouTube channel for my Christy project video, you'll see um, all the things I did to this Christy and how she looked in the beginning. But that's what I, I'm saying though, that you sometimes have to really play with a wig to make it your own because Wigs aren't, you know, not everything works for every person, but you're, 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 so you're sometimes trying to put a round peg into a square hole by taking a wig out of the box and expecting it to look perfect. Um, let's take a look at my sweet talk. This one, Avalon, I took the tag off. I haven't even taken the tag off sweet talk yet. Um, I'll try to get the tag off here so I can try it on because I know I'm keeping it. I just, I just cut it off. Um, remember, don't take your tags off unless you know you're keeping the wig. I've already looked at Sweet Talk just to make sure that, you know, there's no, you know, flaws or damage or anything. So this is Sweet Talk out of the box. Again, I'll do a video on this one too. But you might get this and think this looks nothing like what it looks on any of the reviews I've seen because she's got really bad box hair. You know, the shorter and fuller a wig is, the more permatees a wig has, the more um, laying in a box can impact the style. And it's not a permanent impact, but it definitely can make for a bit of a disappointment if you're a new wig wearer and you get it and you think, what in the world, this is a defect. This wig is not a defect. This is just what happens in the box. Again, with this wig, I would need to um, either soak her in a sink full of water. Sometimes I'll soak shorter wigs um, and then do all those other things. Shake it, you know, uh, squeeze it dry with a towel, not rub it, then shake it out upside down, scrunch it up and hang it upside down. And then at least I know, okay, I've gotten the box hair out of it. Then, you know, then I have to assess what more do I need to do. I have a ton of products that I use uh, depending on what I feel and wig needs. Um, I'm not saying you have to go out and spend a fortune on products. I just happen to not have any impulse control when it comes to trying a new product. Um, but I have some things that have become favorites. You know, with curly wigs, I often like to try um, like this Brandywine mousse can be really helpful if I have a lot of flyaways or I'm just trying to, you know, get some, I'm trying to manage a curl pattern. Another one that works really well for that is this Envy Beauty Balm. There's makeup on it. I keep it by my makeup and everything. Um, something else that I really love, the three, these are the three products I use the most. John Renault Peace Out Cream. It comes in a black container now. Uh, depending on how much styling I think a wig needs. I don't put product in every wig. It really depends. If I am really struggling to get a wig to do what I want, then I'll look at product. Water is my first, uh, uh, the first thing I try, always. 
Something else that I learned about um, dry shampoo, it can be used for shine. I gotta tell you guys, I've never put dry shampoo on any of my wigs, none of, for shine. I just don't, maybe it's because I wear brunettes, I just don't ever think a wig, none of the wigs I've ever gotten have I ever thought it looked too shiny. It looks like healthy sheen, but not too shiny. But this is something that can take shine down, but it can also give you lift because it coats the fibers a little bit. And I have a wig sister named Valerie uh, from Loving Wigs with Valerie, and she likes to try dry shampoo to give lift. She might try that before she tries steam. Um, this Aesthetica Revitalize and Shine, Envy Renew and Repair Glosser Spray. Both of these can be really great um, on a wig that's been worn a number of times. I really don't use those products on brand new wigs because their fibers are still really nice and soft and they've got, because they come with a bit of a silicone coating on them from um, the manufacturer, which just wears off over time. Uh, so those are, you know, having some product available to you can be really helpful. And then steam and all I can tell you there is watch some videos and learn how to steam a wig. Um, maybe, you know, maybe go online and try to find a really cheap wig that you would probably not wear, but that you can practice on. I mean, you can get $20 wigs from Amazon. At the very least, it's a practice. You can get $15 wigs on Amazon. You know, it's a practice opportunity to try steaming up bangs or giving lift to wigs. Uh, or cutting, you know, or thinning. One other thing that I want to tell you real quick about are um, thinning shears. Honestly, if you're going to have wigs, unless you have a stylus that you can use, thinning shears, not regular scissors, they've got the and that is invaluable uh, to helping take some bulk out of wigs that are too heavy in the front. Um, I've done that on a number of wigs. Sorry, I dropped my scissors. I've done that on a number of wigs and it's really easy to go overboard. So it's not something I would, you know, start off without being really careful, watching a lot of videos, but just taking some thinning shears and just thinning a little bit. My, if you go through my YouTube channel library and you find my John Renault, no, I steamed Scarlet. Um, I have a video where I show thinning. I think it might be my Shayna video. I'll have to go and try to find that and link it below. But I did show how I thinned a wig a little bit because it gets some wigs are just too heavy in the front and I don't like the look of it. So bottom line, I thought this was going to be a quick video. Bottom line is you are going to have disappointments when you open a box and get a brand new wig. Maybe not every time, maybe every time. It just depends. Experience will tell you whether that wig needs to be sent back or uh, that you just need to do some things to it like get it wet, scrunch it up, shake it out, use a little product, use a little steam, thin it. But until you can build up that body of experience, it's going to be some trial and error. So I would really encourage you to reach out for advice to people who have experience. I would encourage you to try to find some cheap wigs that you can practice on so that you don't ruin an expensive wig. Uh, if your first attempts aren't very successful, I have ruined. I, I over thinned my very first Gabor Radiant Beauty and I was so sad about that. Um, you know, it's possible that you can ruin wigs, but if you're careful and you go slow, I think you'll be okay. And then just um, level setting your expectations. When you see somebody do a review and the wig looks beautiful and the curls look beautiful and it lays beautiful and it moves beautiful and you're not getting that out of your wig, it could just be because it's been living in a box for God knows how long. Months, a year, more. I mean, you have no way of knowing. So you're going to have to figure out, you know, is it can I do a few things and, and make it work? Um, I'm always happy to answer questions. I hope this was helpful. If anything, I just want to validate that this is normal and it's really can be very challenging in the beginning. Curly and wavy wigs can be a blessing and a curse because these aren't always, curls can um, be very different from wig to wig. Straight wigs, there's a little, you know, there's still variance, but there's not as much variance because the curls, I mean, how they're not made by machine. I mean, even if they're machine wefted, you know, you've got, it's fiber. It, there's variation in fiber, just like in some clothing where there's variation in color. 
and so I think that can make curly wigs a little bit more of a challenge. So if you can start off with straight wigs, it could be a good place to start uh, just because you're um, narrowing the what can be different from wig to wig. Please let me know if you have questions. Um, let me know if this was helpful or if upon watching this, there was something you wish I would have touched on that I didn't. And I'll, I'll make sure to do that in a future video for you. Um, I just hope, I wish you all the best in your journeys and um, don't ever hesitate to reach out to me or any other wig sister, especially the ones who are active in the Facebook groups. We're there because we want to be part of this community and, and to be supportive and get support. Um, Merry Christmas to those of you who are about to celebrate Christmas. Uh, it is a few days away. You may be watching this video months from now and it won't be Christmas, but I just wanted to get that out there for my sisters who I know will watch this right when I post it. Take care, you guys. Talk to you soon.